come stand with me? You got your microphone? Yep. You gonna say hi? Can you say hi? Why don't we stand? Why don't we praise him this morning? You got your microphone. Gary sends his love. He's in Perth this morning. Um, had some crazy testimonies last night. They did, he did a leadership time with the church there. and um, He just stood in front of this couple and he's like, Lord, I don't get anything. And the Lord just showed him deep wells. He's like, mm, great. That's just like the most generic prophetic word ever. And so he, said, he goes, I just see deep wells. And everybody busts out laughing. And wells was their last name. And so what he thought was totally generic was totally um, rocked their socks off. So it was really cool to hear that testimony this morning. Why don't we just lift our hands before the Lord? You know, one thing I, in this season for myself and every time I come before the Lord, it's just like how much He wants to be engaged face to face with us. It's like He just wants to encounter us. He just wants to be with us. Um, so every time I come before Him, it's just like, the, the tangibleness of Him. And so this morning, as we lift our hands, let's engage with who He is as a person and how tangible He is this morning. So Father, we just thank You that You're so intimate and so personal. And so this morning, as we come and bring our praises to You and before You, Lord, that You encounter us in such a personal way. Lord, that we glorify you and that you are in the midst because we glorify you. And so this morning we say, be enthroned in our praises. In Jesus' name, amen.
Sing it one more time, and let's just lift him up. in this place, but it's a personal prophetic atmosphere. It's like God wants to encourage you and give you eyes to see and and just ears to hear what He is saying. So we're just going to spend some time in this this little bit. Just, Just ask the Lord what He wants to say to you personally this morning. It's like He just wants to drop little presents into your spirit that's going to give you courage to face whatever you're facing, to walk whatever you have to walk out, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. He just wants to speak to your heart this morning.
just saying you are the pleasure of the king. You are my pleasure. You are the pleasure of the king. You are the pleasure of the king. You've experienced a father or a mother just flipping out over just a spill cup of water or milk or whatever it may be. And it was an accident, but you experienced the punishment. seen atrocities and she said that and I thought I thought wow um, which was like I hadn't realised how much my mum had seen during the Second World War um, but then I thought so, so other people have suffered what Jesus suffered and then I thought about all the martyrs and I thought there were martyrs who had suffered and suffered worse than what Jesus suffered and I thought what was it that Jesus did then 
in Matthew 26. Oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And it talked about him being distressed and sweating drops of blood. And I thought, what was it about that time that made it so distressing for Jesus? And, and, and I'm sure that what he had to come, what he had to deal with physically was, was distressing. But, but the thing that I had revelation of was that he was about to be ripped apart from his relationship with his father, rejected for the first time in eternity for the intimacy and the closeness that they had. He was prepared and was going to be. <sighs> you know, in, in the time I think about this, it does because he was doing that for us because the next part of the scripture he says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And I believe in that moment he saw us. He saw each one of us. And he, he was prepared for that which was the thing that no one else could do. He was prepared to be rejected, to take on all our sin, so that we could live with Him and with God forever. And I think about that and I go, sometimes I doubt the desires that have been placed in my heart, the dreams that I have, the things that God has promised me, and I go, if Jesus is prepared to do that, nothing to stop what he's doing for me for healing for anything and so that was for me the day is the thing that I go thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let us remember that that's what he did for us this morning as we come up and grab the elements to take a seat guys why don't we just give the worship team a big come on guys we just love you phenomenal um before
before we get into notices and all the other stuff, um, the Lord's been speaking to me. I finally got my new sunglasses yesterday. Um, and uh, Gary talked me into getting some really nice sunglasses that weren't the same ones that I've had for the last eight years. Um, <laughs> well, I usually get Ray-Bans and these ones are Prada, so it also came with the price tag, but I've been saving up for like eight months maybe because I keep losing these particular other sunglasses. And um, what the Lord started to speak to me about is I lost them in America in a time of contention because you guys all know we're pretty vulnerable, right? Uh, so what was happening was we'd landed at 11 o'clock at night into Nashville or 10 o'clock at night and Gary spent an hour and a half trying to choose a rental car with two crying babies, a very hungry mummy, and he wanted um, this particular car, and he's like, yes, we got it. And I'm like, honey, why the heck did you ask for that car? We've got five suitcases. We cannot fit them in. Like, we just cannot fit them in. And he's like, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And then, of course, we couldn't fit them in. We had to get car seats, we had to choose car seats and all this sort of stuff. And this goes on for an hour and a half of him running around the parking lot going, I get to choose whatever I want. And then he chooses a car that I can't even get into because it's literally up to here on me. So I couldn't put our kids in that car. And I was so mad, to say the least. And the last I remember is I had my sunglasses on my head. The next day, I could not find them anywhere. And the Lord just started to speak to me about when I got my new sunglasses yesterday is, is oftentimes we lose vision in the time of contention and the time of place of stress and the time of place of being squeezed. Like my patience was tested to the nth degree and I didn't let him know because we actually had somebody with us at the time. Our net, but I let him know, right? You know, only the way wives can let him know. And so Gary had to get the kids in and out of the car and he, he fully had to wear what he, his decision because I literally couldn't do anything. I couldn't even get the pram in the boot. It was so high. And so but the Lord was just speaking to me about how there's, when there's times of pressure, we can misplace our vision. And I feel like there's been people in this place that in times of pressure, in times of, of, of contention, we've misplaced our vision and, and, this, and the lens that we actually look through is Father's eyes on our circumstance. But not only does he want to replace it and renew them, he wants to upgrade them. See, I, got, I went from Ray-Bans to Prada. I've never had Prada glasses in my life. And they're really nice, by the way. <laughs> they're not only just nice sunglasses, but they've got the, um, what's it called? The, tra no, no, they're not transitions because I don't have prescription. They are, what's that? Polarized, thank you. They're polarized, so they make everything crystal clear. And I feel like the Lord's wanting to upgrade our vision, not only give re-give us our vision back, but upgrade it and make everything crystal clear. And he's gonna teach me not to lose them in times of connection, <laughs> contention, amen. But what I was reading is Habakkuk 2, and this was interesting to me. Habakkuk 2 verse 1, it says, I will stand at my watch and I will set myself on the rampart and I will watch to see what he will say to me. Oftentimes we're looking to see what he will do instead of see what he will say. And I feel like the Lord's saying, look for what I'm going to say to you. But this is what he said. And I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Oftentimes when we're looking for vision and we're looking for things, we're not actually looking for God's correction. And oftentimes in transition and oftentimes when God's wanting to upgrade us, he wants to correct a few things so that we're free to be into the next season. He wants us to let go of some stuff and finish a season well so that we don't take that baggage with us into the new season. You see, no matter what season you're in, if you try and 
um, jumpstart into the next one without finishing one. Whatever you've got in your hands still, you will take with you into the next season. And so that correction oftentimes looks like a whole lot of process of letting go. Of letting go of judgments, letting go of, of ideals, letting go of expectations, letting go of pain, letting go of what you actually thought the vision might turn out to be like. It's not always bad, what we think is bad anyway. And then he says, and then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And I feel like the upgrade of vision, it's like the Lord is going to meet us in that place of clear vision, both personally and corporately. It will be crystal clear. It will have the ability for you to see what the Lord is saying. Amen? Sorry, that was my little, I'm not preaching today, so I had to take the microphone when I had it. <laughs> That was for free. <clears throat> but be blessed by that because it's, it's something that we're all walking out both personally and corporately. Amen. And thank you, Jesus, for nice husbands who buy them prouder glasses. The word of the Lord came through them. <laughs> Gary buys shirts all the time and he goes, but honey, I could preach in this shirt. It looks so good on me when I'm preaching. And I'm like, oh. So then I, I could get to say that about my sunglasses. The Lord's going to speak through these sunglasses. <laughs> well, we don't have too many notices today, but um, we're fast approaching um, Cheyenne being with us. It's going to be amazing. Who knows of Cheyenne? A few of you. Okay, let me talk to you about Cheyenne is one of the apostles of revival. He lives, breathes revival. He is evangelist at heart, but he is, he is a papa. If, if you've ever seen him minister, he's just a father in the faith. He is um, on the board along with John and Carol Arnott, Bill and Benny Johnson, um, Georgian and Winnie, Heidi and Roland, and I think there's one other couple that I'm missing, but they're the Revival Alliance guys. Um, Cheyenne himself heads up um, Harvest International Ministries. Um, based in Pasadena, I think it is, in, the, in California. Huge ministry, but his whole heritage is signs, wonders, miracles, revival, Holy Ghost moving. Um, check him out, have a look online. You'll find loads of stuff um, on them. But he is super, super, super well-known in Melbourne. So if you want a seat, book now, because we will not have room. We will not have tickets at the door, basically. So if you need help in getting those tickets online, um, I'm sure Sam and Tink will be able to help you with the electronics if you need that. Um, but otherwise, please, please, please book um, to be here because we feel like it's going to be an amazing weekend. It's going to be Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and then we're having a pastors and leaders time here um, Saturday morning um, for the pastors and leaders to get um, some good time with him. Um, Adam is going to be Adam and Jess, or Adam. Why don't you stand, Adam? So some people may or may not know you. Is going to be helping coordinate um, the weekend um, and administrating the volunteers and stuff. So if you, do we have enough volunteers? We need six more volunteers. Um, so please see Adam um, for the weekend, and he'll tell you the deal that you get. <laughs> Um, so please see Adam about that. And that is... Oh, sorry, it's, I've got to scroll. Um, Shift the Nation on the 6th of November. For those who don't know, it is a prayer um, day for the nation. Am I right? And we are hosting one here at Hillview. Um, so please, leading up to that, please be praying into that event. Um, but also... Um, be ready to be here, and we'll get more details to you as we get closer to the time. Do we have, I know we've got a few birthdays. 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 
we got a few birthdays. Um, Steph is one of them, and I'm, lo- I'm staring her down. We've got a few birthdays and wedding anniversaries, so we would love to wish you happy birthday. Happy birthday, Steph. <laughs> Jess Watts. Come on. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Last week, were you, did you miss your chocolate? Yeah. Katie, Katie turned 18. No way, that makes me feel old. She was nine. Oh, no, she was actually eight when we met her. Hey, come on. Birthday? Come on. Amen. Offering. Why don't we just turn around and say hi to someone before we jump into offering? Let's take a moment, go greet someone, love on someone. We're going to get ready to give our tithes and offerings this morning. And I just want to remind each and every one of us the faithfulness of God. As we bring our tithes and offerings before the Lord, it's like, it's like if we're faithful to sow, that's the part that we play in the whole thing. Like we actually can't control anything else. Because even in, in I've, I've been reading from cover to cover, and in Deuteronomy, I'm finally up to Deuteronomy, I cried through Leviticus, it's so boring, sorry. Just being honest, right? Finally up to Deuteronomy, it took me a while. I read through, the, you know, Genesis, Exodus, really fast, and I spent about three months on Deuteronomy, because I was just like, one verse, okay. <laughs> It's pretty brutal, but now I'm up to Deuteronomy, which is a little bit better. But it, one of the scriptures it talks about how he says, "Look, if you keep your word, keep my word in front of you, and do what I've told you to do, I will not only give you the rain, the the former rain, but I'll give you the latter rain." And it was, you know, yes, they had so many rules and laws and everything, but by this point in Deuteronomy, the Lord had actually narrowed it down to the Ten Commandments. And then there was festivals and feasts and rules around that. But he boiled it all down to the Ten Commandments. And he's like, look, guys, if you keep my commandments in front of you and you do what I ask you to do, you're not only going to be blessed, you're going to be the envy of nations. And it's literally just the simplistic thing of being obedient in the small stuff. 
Because we look at it so complicated, like they had 613 laws or something that they had to keep, plus all the rules around each ritual that they did, around each festival and all that sort of stuff. We look at that as a rules God, and we look at that as a performance God. No, he's like, actually, this is just the way of life. You live in a, in a, in a climate that there's consequences, there's famine, there's everything else around you. But if you do what I say, I'm going to protect you from all of that. That was, that was God's covenant with them. How much more is Jesus' covenant with us? And Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. And what's the simplistic thing he said? Give to God what is God's. Give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. That's the baseline for giving. It's God's. But the fruit that comes out of it, there's, there's, there's no have to's. Guys, you get to choose, but I encourage you to choose what God says because he's going to bless you for it. And it's like when we sow and we give back to God, we have no control of it from there. We have no control over the weather. We have no control over the, what, how much fruit we get and how much grows. But God did say, I'll rebuke the devourer. God did say, test me now in this. God did say, if the sparrows are provided for, how much more will I provide for you? Amen? So in the simplicity of obedience this morning, let's give to God and know his faithfulness of providing the former and the latter rains. And not only in the former and latter rains, but even in the time of famine, we can reap a hundredfold because of his covenant with us. It doesn't matter about the circumstances, it doesn't matter about the world economy. We are his people and he says we are blessed. Amen? Amen. So why don't we stand to our feet and let's pray and declare over our offering this morning. Is it? She's there. All right, even if you give electronically, hold it in your hand and declare over this. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. Dreams, visions, and angelic visitations, declarations, signs, and wonders with divine manifestations, anointing, gifting, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will pour out favor, blessings, and increase upon me so that I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to pass the offering buckets through. <coughs> Why don't you high five someone as you take your seat? <coughs> I want to just give you guys a really cool testimony. Um, a friend of mine, they were really struggling to sell their house. And so they called a few friends, and they, they came up. They were like, right, we're going we're gonna to write a blessing. How many of you guys have heard the Father's blessing that David T. speaks about, right? So they took the principle, and they wrote a blessing for their house to sell. And they had a, this is horrible price, this is good, we're happy price, and this is an amazing price. Like, they, they'd had it on for months, and every house around them was selling, and they were getting, like, to the place where they, like, we need to sell this house, and so they organized their friends to come over, and they wrote out a blessing for the sale of the house, and they started to declare over the house within 24 hours they sold it, and they sold it for the we're really happy price. It wasn't their go to Paris price, which is what she wanted, but it was their we're really happy and we're, we're good price. And so sometimes when we declare over our offerings and things like that, we think we're just going through the motions. 
We're not. We're, dec- we're, we're decreeing and prophesying day in, day out. And I want to encourage you, write blessings, write things down. It's not a bad thing to write a pre-planned prayer out and pray it over and over over again. I was listening to um, Bill at the conference last, was it last, only last week? Yes, it was only last week. It's been a long week. Um, and he was saying in one of the sessions, he was talking about how it's such a fast food environment. Now we pray and we go, God didn't come through. And we're like, how long have you prayed for? Oh, t- three days. Okay, just pray again. And then they go for another three days, but God hasn't come through. Keep praying until it comes through. Amen? Just keep praying. Don't give up. Amen? Because God is so good at answering prayer. All right. I spoke all last week, and I don't know what's wrong with me this week. I was at a women's Anglican camp last week. Number one, it was a women's camp. Number two, it was Anglican. So it was a whole new world for me. It was pretty cool. Um, It was freezing cold. Testimony. It was such an honor and privilege to go to Angl- a whole bunch of Anglican women that are so hungry for God and yet petrified. You know, they're, they're, they're wanting the Holy Spirit, they're wanting healing, they're wanting everything. And on the Saturday night, we had an amazing ministry time of just people encountering the Father for the first time. Um, like real identity shifts of, of I'm so God, I'm so scared. One of the ones was, I'm so scared for God to change me because I'm worried about what everybody else will think. And so the main, the whole thing really was, was shame, was being broken off and, and, and really removed from their lives. And so a lot of them, the whole weekend was like deer in the headlights a little bit. Um, but that also freaked them out royally with my testimony. It was really fun. They asked me to share my testimony and people don't realize what I've come from. And having revival day in and day out my whole teenage years scares some people. <laughs> So I scared them royally, and then we unpacked it a little bit, and it was fun. It was good. It was really, really good. Um, And Donna actually came with me, Donna Moulton. It's her birthday as well, so if you message her, say happy birthday to her, but they couldn't get here because of kids' um, stuff on. But um, Donna came with me to look after Emma, and so that was great. I was very grateful. One of my cool testimonies was she gave me a whole hour's nap. I'm just like, it was pure heaven. I had a whole hour. I know, seriously. I will, I will sow the favor. <laughs> it was just really cool. But other than that, it was really cool. Enough of me. I really, I'm really honored and privileged to introduce Steve this morning. The one thing that marks his life is that scripture that says, we are for signs and wonders. We are in this, from the time I've known him, and that's a long time now, it's coming up, 11 years in November, it's our anniversary. And then a year later, we met Andrea, and I told him quite emphatically, if you don't marry her, you're ditched, and I'm going to be friends with Andrea. (laughs) I did. That's what brothers and sisters can say to each other, it's all good. (laughs) But most of you guys don't know that Steve was the one that actually got us into Melbourne in the first place. Steve paid for our ticket from Sydney to Melbourne. We had no idea what we were coming to. We just knew we were coming to a guy called Steve Ellison was bringing us in and we were speaking at Hillview. That's all we knew. But Steve didn't even attend Hillview back in the day. And the one thing I've known from this man is when he sees what God's going to do, he just jumps at it. He moves on it. He is for signs and wonders, and it t- seriously was a sign and a wonder that we even made it here because we were ready to write off Australia and never come back. But because of this man's faith, we are here. And there are so many times that this man has just gone, it's the word of the Lord, I'm not budging. And so this morning, why don't we stand and honor him for the man of faith that he is, and receive him today. Come on, Steve.
Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. I want to welcome, um, before I get into the message, I know some first-time visitors here. I want to welcome you guys. Um, um, this man over here is uh, Dion. Um, I'm going to call him Dion from Tasmania, even though he doesn't live in Tasmania anymore. Because I walked up before and said, hey, man, I'm Steve. And he goes, I'm Dion. I go, you're from Tasmania. Now, that wasn't a word of knowledge. That was literally, I, I met this guy in 2005 for about an hour. And somehow, now, Dara just said I'm for signs and wonders, right? Here's the thing. This congregation know I'm terrible at remembering a name. So there you go. There's a sign and wonder this morning. I'll tell you what, that's awesome. That was pretty funny. And um, uh, and I know we have another visitor as well. Um, and I think there's a couple other visitors. So go and um, say hi, hi to these guys. How many believe we've already heard the word of the Lord this morning? When Sarah was preaching, man, that was that was unbelievable. I was saying, oh, just keep going, man. That was on that was on spirit. How many think that? Um. Thank you, Jesus. Father, why don't you just, just pray with me. Father, we just thank you for heaven just to invade this place right now. Father, not my words, but your words. Father, not our will, but your will, Father. Lord, we thank you that the kingdom would come. <laughs> come on, why don't you just begin to petition the Father for the kingdom. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the kingdom in this place in Jesus' name. Father, when you come, Lord, when your kingdom comes, Lord, anything can happen. And Father, we want anything to happen right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can ask for more, Lord, and you will grant it, Lord. I thank you that you literally wrote more in the sky. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, Gary preached on more one time at the start of the year, I don't know, 2014, something like that. We walked out the back um, after the service and literally a sign writer had written more above the building. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for more right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Thank you for more, Lord. I don't care how much we have. We thank you. Sorry, I do care. <laughs> I bless you for how much we have, but we thank you for more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, um, it, is, it is really important what we speak. Um, you know, Sarah was just saying, listen, what we speak is really important. And, uh, and it really is important what we speak. Um, uh, I want you, I'll, I'll, just before I get into the actual message, I guess, I want you to turn over to um, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 4 and verse 13. How many know what we, ha what we speak has power? And, um, and, uh, and we want to we continually release blessing. And one of, the things, one of the things Sarah just said, I just want to pick up on the, on the word of the Lord then, because we don't want to just bypass... We don't want to just go past it. And so I just want to uh, just come back to this word of the Lord for a moment. You know, one of the things that, that we're learning and, and one of the things that's happening at the moment is that what we speak and how we operate determine what we receive. I'll say it again. What we speak and how we operate determine um, what we receive. So, you know, um, I've said this before, I'll say it again. You know, transition, for example, is messy sometimes. But you know what? It's a great opportunity for us to practice what we preach. Um, and, and I've seen transitions, you know, I remember being in transitions in some other places, I won't name um, those particular places, where the messiness of transition, you know, people's opinions of one another and stuff started coming out and things start coming out. And I think, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a moment, but, um, but you know what? Um, and, and, pe and people getting into the point where they were starting to grumble about all the things that don't happen or this stuff or, or, or all this kind of stuff. Do you know what? That actually exposes the, the, more, the more of the kingdom that we actually need. If Jesus says, um, listen, how you, um, if, you, if you're faithful with the little, then I'll give you the more. Then I want to be faithful with every word I'm saying, right? So I can have the more. As an example, um, uh, as an example, um, how I treat Gary and Sarah as a leader in this moment is is very much a, a great test of the kingdom, because if my, if I really believe in preaching the kingdom and then and then actually treat them because they're leaving, like and I'm, and we wouldn't do that, and you guys know that, but but if I did, right, because I've seen this happen, right, um, if I wasn't actually celebrating who they were 
and celebrating who they're going to be and what they're going to do and I was rather complaining that you know things weren't you know whatever you know what that's actually I'm actually counter countering the very kingdom I preach about it's one thing to believe for miracles signs and wonders revelations and whatever but but when you're faced with a situation that is actually real right then the actual um, modus operandi of your heart comes out how many know that I just need to preach on the Father for a moment. Listen, the, the love of the Father, and this church has a history, I don't know if you know or not, but for 10 years, this, this church were a centerpiece of teaching the love of the Father to the body of Christ here in Melbourne, or, or that message when it began breaking out from Toronto. This was the, one of the centerpieces of that, and we, we helped bring that message. Isn't that true, Dave? Dave was one of the, the leadership team um, who helped champion that through the body of Christ. But the love of God message is not complete without the discipline of God. You cannot have one without the other. I'll tell you why. Okay? Because the discipline of God is actually not that He's punishing you. Here's my point. If I had Ezekiel, and Ezekiel's 14 years of age, and he wants to go and do something, that's one thing, or, or five years of age or whatever, but when he's 20, how many of you parents know that you need to allow your son and daughter to make choices even if it's bad. And it's one thing for us to, be, and we need to believe in the love of God and, and believe in the love of God, but the, the love of God allowed Peter to say, because I want you to come into your, into your core, I'm going to take my hand of protection off you, allow your heart to be exposed for a moment until the gl glory of God comes into your heart right and that very thing is overcome because what you're praying for i can't give you unless you make the choice yourself how many know that but while we're in the actual situation we then began complaining to the lord that he's doing it despite the fact that he didn't do it he just literally we do every day of the week despite the fact that he just he just he just didn't answer or he, or he took his hand off or whatever but it actually allows our heart to be exposed is that true and we call it the discipline of the Lord simply because of, of Hebrews chapter 12 my son do not despise the discipline of the Lord because he, he he disciplines every person he accepts but see here's the thing a father has to take a long-term view the short-term view is listen um, you, you want that you've got it the long-term view is you want to you want to be mature no problem at all I'll bring you along this path, okay? But, I, but I'm going to let you make some decisions that I know you're probably going to make it the wrong way. I know you're going to do that. But, it, but I want you to learn by it. My son, do not despise the discipline of the Lord. This is Hebrews chapter 12. For he chastens every son he accepts, and it produces a harvest of righteousness for those who are trained by it. Now, hear that last part. It produces a harvest of righteousness for those who are trained by it. You can absolutely not be trained by a circumstance or situation. How many of us have been round a mountain before? Oh, okay, sorry, I'll speak for myself. Well, you, you guys are not the people, but for me, I've been around a mountain once, twice, maybe 10 times, right? Now, when you start to see patterns in your life, you should be going, you know what, the Lord actually wants to teach me something in this moment. Because He wants to shift something in your spirit. He, he's at, it's actually the kindness of God that's saying, listen, I want to birth something in you and some, something that produces faith and character. Um, suffering produces perseverance, it says. Perseverance, uh, I'm, I'm going to get this, the actual wording incorrect. I can't, I, I can't remember the exact verse, so I won't go back there. But um, produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character, hope, right? And, and, so, um, and so it produces something in you, but you do not have to be trained by it or you can be. So I want to encourage us when circumstances and situations come that, um, that it's actually the kindness of God. And when you take that position, guess what? God manifests. I'm glad I'm, I'm uh, speaking to three people in this meeting. Come on. <laughs> I don't need the encouragement. I just, I, I just like to make sure people are hearing it, right? All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Who's there? In verse 13. Thank you, Father. 
Who's ready for the cloud of glory to come in this room? We got one, definitely. <laughs> we having the same spirit of faith, according, according as it is written, believed and therefore I have spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, you might be looking at a different translation. I'm deliberately reading the King James. The King James is a transliteration, meaning it picks up on the specific words. You know, the NIV, um, some of these other translations, they try to understand what was being said as opposed to picking up on the exact words. King James um, and the American Standard Version both go after the exact word and really just try and give you the word itself. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have what? Spoken. If you, if you get asked, why, why do I have to speak in prayer? Well, you, you don't in some ways. In some ways, when you're operating on your own in the spirit realm, sometimes, um, sometimes you know, through faith, you can just speak to something um, supernaturally and make it happen. I, I've had, you know, that's the knowing of the Spirit. However, there is a power in the spoken word. Um, God has given us the ability to do that. And so, now I want, you to, I want you to pick up on two things. The word faith and the word belief there. Did you, have, did you know that the word faith is a noun? It's a noun. It's actually a person. We having the spirit of faith. And I love the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith for me is the, is the absolutely uncompromising, not in your mental conviction process. Where you know that you know that you know and nothing, it's not a mind issue. It's the faith that comes from the Father that consumes you that goes, it is what it is. You can tell me what you want but it's not a mental conviction problem. However, the word believing is a verb. It's something you do, and it is a mental conviction problem. I believed and therefore I spoken. So what does it say? We having the same spirit of faith, which is who? who who's, if it's a noun, what's it describing? We having the same spirit of faith. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, right? The Father. The spirit of faith that has become evident within us, according to as it is written, we have believed and therefore we have spoken. We believe first and therefore we've spoken. Okay, so we begin to believe. We begin to believe in what? In, but, you know, Jesus says, before you pray, believe that you've received it and then it shall be yours. Yeah? And we've sp therefore we've spoken. So speak. Make your words line up with what you believe, okay? And I'll show you in a moment where, where that might be interesting. And therefore, we, um, we also believe and therefore speak, right? Therefore, I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak because there's this, there's this ability that happens that when you begin to believe and you speak what you believe, you then believe it more and you speak more. How many knows that's a cool thought? Thing. How many know that your thought, your um, literally in your brain, your mind can, can be convinced by what you continue to speak to yourself? This is why people, you know, I, I heard the other day. This is a classic. Arnold Schwarzenegger on TV in Austria when he was a bodybuilder. They said to him, "What are you going to do in the future?" He said, "I'm going to move to America and I'm going to get into politics. I'm going to be in American politics." From bodybuilding, you couldn't write that script. But he was 100% convinced and began speaking it over his life until it comes to pass. Now listen, it's not the secret, it's just a fact. You speak what you believe, I speak and therefore I am. I speak and then that convinces my mind and, and I get more believing from the fact that I'm speaking. But a lot of times we like to speak grumbling. As people, we prefer to speak what's not happening rather than what is happening. That's actually a natural preference. I don't, I, I'm not speaking about Hillview. I'm speaking about the church down the road and myself. But it is a natural preference. Thank you, Jesus. If you, if you want to read James chapter 3, right? And it talks to you about, listen, the tongue is a fire. It's, it's, it's got the ability to set a place on sale, a direction and all that. But out of the same um, tongue comes both good waters and bad waters. How many know that? It's weird. Why does that happen? I don't know, but it does. Why is it that the Israelites had so, I've said this so many times, 
I find it so amazing that they would say to the Lord, show me a sign. And they would be grumbling, but literally manna is falling from heaven right in front of them. There's signs and wonders right in front of them. And yet they can remember <laughs> the grumbling, but, but the signs and wonders are literally right there in that moment. How crazy is that? Now, if you can keep your mind to remember signs and wonders that the Lord's done for you, you know, you come to a situation and you go, I just want to, before I do anything, I'm going to do what David did. I'm going to recount the very prophet, the, the very words of the Lord, the signs and wonders of the Lord. I'm just going to go begin to do them. That's why David says, I, I lay awake on my bed recounting the signs and wonders. Because when he came to the next giant, he just goes, hang on, let me just pause back in a sec. I was with a lion and a lion is a hundred times more powerful than me and I ripped it from shred to shred. And then I came to the, that, that lion called Goliath, which most of us would be freaking out at. And then, I, and then I remembered that God had done that with the lion, so I did that with him. And then I've done it with this one, and then I've done it with this one, and then I went after this one. And then Saul tried to kill me, and that didn't matter. And you know what? Every one of you have a testimony like that. Now, I love that Sarah went and ministered to the Anglican women. And I was having this conversation last night with another minister, I won't name who, and I won't name the, the process, but she was saying it was so liberating for her because she'd been at a Holy Spirit place, and she's ministered a lot into places that um, do not have openness to the Holy Spirit. So she was told consistently, talk about the Holy Spirit, but don't talk about the gift of tongues. And she'd, she'd be like, oh, that's so, it's just not the whole gospel. You know, and so she felt, you know, but now she went to another place that she began to speak in the Holy Spirit. And they, they said, just go for it. And she just, she, she said, just the radical power of the Holy Spirit. One of my favorite things to do is to go to a church that, loves the Holy Spirit, is so interested in the Holy Spirit, but has no experience yet. That's one of the funnest things to do, right? It really is, because you begin introducing people to the Holy Spirit, and they're at their face. Um, you know, I remember one time we did, I, I did this with a Baptist church, and I took them through the scriptures of Jesus being seated in heaven while on earth, and, you know, this is, I want to, yeah, no, it's 2005, and, um, and they, they were hungry, and they believed the scripture, but, but they had nothing going on. So I took them through the scriptures with the Baptist church because they're so good at the scripture, you want to do that. And then waited for 40 minutes for the Holy Spirit to break out and boom. And these, the, the, the sign of that night, I mean, there was signs and wonders everywhere, but two guys who were shuffling, like literally like shuffling, like trying to, they wanted to run out of the, the meeting because they were so anti what I was saying. Um, they, they stood to the back and I didn't try and pray for anyone that night because I wanted to demonstrate the Holy Spirit, which means I didn't want to lay hands on people. I wanted to... Holy Spirit to come on people because it proved to them that it was completely God. And, you know, we had a, a, a Buddhist dude in the front had a third heaven experience and met Jesus and got saved right there. We had a dude get, like, a dude have a crazy healing. We had, a, you know, crazy deliverance. Everything and everything was going on in this meeting. And, um, uh, but these two guys were at the back trying to keep away, but they couldn't get out of the door because the Holy Spirit had arrested them. And so, and so these, uh, and so one of the guys went to them and got to pray for, and th th they kind of liked and got to pray with them, and they got hit by the love of the Father and began wailing, crying, wailing, crying, for about I would say 40 minutes, and they got up and I've never seen redness around the eyes like this before, and they said, "Listen, we've been at Bible college, we preached against the stuff you talked about, but but we we just need to have the love of God. I'm so sorry." And, and they didn't have to say sorry to me. Like, I couldn't care less. But, but I, I mean, I could. I, I loved it. But to me, that was when you know you're winning. But I'll tell you what. That's, that, that's the problem when you, you can grieve the Holy Spirit by, by saying only this far but not that. That's their problem. Our problem is familiarity. We don't, we don't in, in, you know, we don't grieve the church. Can, can, I, can I just be rea real with you guys? I'm not trying to condemn anyone. This isn't a condemning situation. I'm just saying that, listen, us who know the Holy Spirit, we grieve through con familiarity because we, we expect this is the way you're going to move, Lord. This is what you're going to do. This is, uh, you know, I've seen you do this before. You're not doing it. We grieve through familiarity. They grieve through stopping the, the actual move of the Holy Spirit. Do you get what I'm saying? Both are as bad as each other. In fact, I would say this is actually worse than that simply because we know better. And I'm talking to me, guys. Don't hear it as a condemning thing. This is, this is just part of the human condition. I haven't got into one thing I was going to say today yet. This is hilarious. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
All right. How many is getting something so far? Father, we just repent right now and rebuke familiarity in Jesus' name. We never want to become familiar with your presence to the point that we don't expect it. That's a good word right there. Exodus chapter 33. time we got 11:33. now moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance calling it the tent of meeting so they're in the desert at the moment anyone inquiring of the lord would go to the tent say anyone outside the camp my first question to you is why outside the camp why pitch it outside the tent the camp they've got the tabernacle of glory right in the center or at least it came in the center um, a little bit later. But why the tent of meeting outside? Has anyone ever thought of that? Sometimes you need to come in a different atmosphere. You need to come under a different atmosphere to receive the word of the Lord. You know, what? one of the things Andrew and I do is when we go to, go to hear the word of the Lord, we try and make sure we, we absolutely don't do those meetings in our house because we come under our own atmosphere. We actually go to somewhere that's a different atmosphere if we can, and usually we're looking for an atmosphere um, of vision and, and, and that sort of atmosphere, but, but it's outside the camp. Sometimes you've actually got to go outside, and sometimes you've got to go outside the atmosphere, but even spiritually speaking, how many know that Daniel was in Babylon, but Babylon wasn't in Daniel? Did you know he was trained in all the ways of the Chaldeans? How many know that? How many know that all the ways of the Chaldeans tra- all the ways of the Chaldeans, and I'm about to blow some people's minds here, included witchcraft. He was called a magician because he was trained in the black arts. I'm not joking. And yet his heart never submitted to it once. That is phenomenal. But that is not everyone's call. Let me, let me say it that way. Only certain people could do that. But he had a different atmosphere despite the fact that he was in the atmosphere. Sometimes we need to go, you know what? This atmosphere is not the atmosphere I know of the kingdom. Therefore, I'm going to step in a different atmosphere and I'm going to, I'm going to come into the tent of meeting atmosphere right now. Despite the fact that nothing else is happening around me, I don't care. I am the atmosphere. Who wants to go in and shift, shift in the kingdom things that cannot be shifted? apparently learn to have your atmosphere with heaven your tent of meeting with heaven to the point where it doesn't the outside atmosphere has no impact on you but the internal impact of the holy spirit has impact on you you know um the team and i we went to sri Lanka. you know um uh jillian and i were talking this week and and um the, the second the second village we went into we we went up to our um like literally uh maris and i and um uh, Maris and I and Lisa walked up literally right past the warlock's um, house and, and the thing was he had no touch on us because the Holy Spirit had spoke now you don't want to do that unless the Holy Spirit spoken but the Holy Spirit had spoken, people had prayed it was fine, we just walked straight up and he had no authority on me what I didn't realise is that when I got back the Lord obviously gives, uh, half the time gives you hindsight deliberately what I didn't realise is he wasn't just your average warlock he was actually a, a, a He's actually got a, a territorial type thing on him, and I didn't realize till afterwards. And I don't mean him; I mean the the thing that that he's 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 promoting has a territorial thing on him. But the fact is, he had no he has no authority because the Holy Spirit spoke it at the time. And the atmosphere that we carry is greater than the atmosphere that's in that in that place when it's by led by the Holy Spirit, because all those who are led by the Spirit of God are what sons and daughters of God. Jesus did what he saw his father doing. Amen? When you do what you, 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 your father, you see your father's doing, it's pretty easy. It's not that hard. So back to this. So they're in the tent of meeting, inquiring of the Lord. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. Do you want to be the people who watch, or do you want to be the people who are in? 
As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of a cloud came, would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud at the entrance of the tent, they stood and worshipped each at their own tent. Now that's a good principle right there. Now, even if you don't... Um, um, one, of the thing, one of the things that's a really good way to get your, your words lined up and begin to see signs and wonders is begin to thank the Lord and, and, and celebrate every time something happens. If you're a person of praise and celebration, you'll see more every time than if you're a person of talking about what's not happening. You know what? Jesus doesn't respond to what's not happening. He responds to faith and praise. Did you know that? Faith and praise are the currencies that he goes after. Um, what we don't, what we speak about. So, so we're sitting there and we're going, oh, but God, it's been so many years. I'm not in this. I'm not in that. I haven't been on whatever. I haven't been this. But you're actually, he's going, but as a son, I want you to get to the point that you're celebrating every moment so that I'm unlocking as you're speaking the very thing you're, you're complaining to me about. Someone hearing me? I guess you guys don't do that, but, um, but I do. So, whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud at the entrance, they stood and worshipped each at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. How many want to have face to face? <laughs> As a man speaks to his friend. Thank you, Jesus. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Listen, when we're talking about, we've been talking as a, as a team and listen, I, there is something I need to say, by the way, around, around the transition that I said on, on, on Wednesday night. Listen, um, we, we haven't necessarily made this clear, but listen, um, there's good things happening in the spirit. I do need to say that Andrea and I and um, Ray and Di, and I'm speaking on behalf of Ray and Di, but I don't have a permission to, are not going anywhere. There's no, there's no plan at all to go anywhere. There's good things happen. There'll be some announcements um, around this stuff um, at a later point, but the Holy Spirit's giving us a download. But I will say that, that what we're more interested in doing, um, so hear me clearly, I did not say, I did not say Andrew and I are taking that role. That was not what I said. What I did say is we're not going anywhere. Okay, so let's just be clear on that point. Um, but we will come back to you guys with, some, um, with, with what we feel like the Holy Spirit's saying uh, a little bit later on. But what we are doing is saying, listen, who do we want to be? Because the Lord cares, the Father cares more about who you become than what you become. He cares more about the, the eternal outcome and the longer term outcome than he does about a short term scenario. And he ca therefore, he cares more about the process than he does about the actual outcome. We always want the outcome. We do as humans, we always want the outcome. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm included. When, I, when I'm going for praying, I want the sign and wonder right there. I mean, I, my, my, thing, my thing is I'm now, right? Like, and I'm part of that generation. I'm more and more part of that generation, the younger they, they get. But that's, that's, that's a gift that's also on this generation. The gift is also your greatest weakness. Your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. If, the, if you want it now, that's a great strength but because you're, you're thinking now time. But it's also a, a, a weakness in that we're looking for it in the, in the moment only as opposed to expecting the Lord is doing a process with us and that he cares more about the process than he does about the outcome. Good preaching, Stephen. Well done. Hallelujah. And who we want to be is this. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure I speak for most people. Above every single ministry, above every single program we could do, above every other piece that we could do, the presence of God, first and foremost. We're not doing it without the presence, guys. Moses said to the people, this is verse 12, you've been telling, up, telling me, lead these people, but you've not let me know when you will send me. You've said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you, say know you, and continue to find favor with you. Remember, this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said, listen, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish your people from all the other people? 
places on the face of the earth. Listen, you can stamp the front, you can stamp the word church on any pla- on any building anywhere around the world, and you can get a people a group of people there that does not make a church. The only thing that distinguishes us from every other place is not the social committee. It's not the gift of administration, although I love that. I absolutely love gift administration. And by the way, did you know that the gift of administration is absolutely not photocopying? It's not event coordinating either. The gift of administration, I'm a bit detour, but just so you understand it, is the word kubernesis. It actually means to steer the ship. How many of you realize that? Hence why Paul yong Cho, how many know who Paul yong Cho is? And that church, half a million people in a single church. Do you know how it came to pass? Came to pass through prayer, because everything comes to pass through prayer. Came to pass through Paul yong Cho, but it actually came to pass through his mother-in-law, who was a gift of administration and figured out how to administer that many people. Because how many know you can't build a church of half a million without some administration? And I can't I'll tell you, you can't build a church of 100 without some administration. We bless the gift of administration, and it isn't a photocopying back room gift. It is a central piece. And any gift that fits in is actually a central piece in the body of Christ. It's not like the apostles and prophets are up here, pastors and teachers, and right down the bottom is the poor gift of administration. But we do think of it that way sometimes. I know you don't. Maybe I do. Rebuke that. You you guys can pray for me. I just took a detour. Where was I? That's the problem with doing detours, isn't it? I'm testing whether you're listening. This is, this is actually what it was. I was testing whether you're listening. No, before that. The presence of God, that's right, that's right. So above every single ministry, above everything that we can do, can I tell you, you can go without the presence. I can put the name church, we can go and build something, we can do cool stuff, but unless it inca- includes the full encounter of the Holy Spirit, that's the one thing that Andrew and I would say, look, if, if, if you guys want to do that, we wouldn't. Right? And I know you don't. I know most people in this room are like, listen, we're here because we want to encounter God. Hillview's always been that. Isn't that true, Dave? It was built on that foundation. It is not stopping on that foundation. And I want us to get stronger on that foundation. But listen, when we gather, we all should come expecting literally for the cloud of glory. And that can happen in this media, it can happen in coffee shops, it can happen whatever. But listen, if this year is am, I am possible, um, I, I, uh, there's a real call in the spirit right now to say, is it possible? And we need to determine, is it possible? Is it possible that literally what Moses had comes into this meeting? Then let's get our words to line up with our very belief system until our belief system becomes faith and faith releases exactly what it says it's going to release. John told me, John Arna, who, who passed this congregation for 10 years, told me, he said, listen, before the outpouring with Gary and Sarah in 2007, he said, he said, I got convinced about three years prior that God wanted to move and he said, you couldn't tell me otherwise. God wanted to move. And people were telling me, listen, yeah, yeah, we, we need to put structure. He's, he's like, listen, God wants to move. He just, he just said he, something came into him, and he began speaking it until he believed it. And when he believed it, he had the faith. And when the faith, uh, and then, you know, we know the history of 2007. There was an outbreak here, lasted every night for, for an entire year. 200 people, you know, especially in that first uh, three months or in the first 21 days, and Dave was there, and there's a bunch of people in this room that were there. You know, I saw, a, I, think, I think the most extraordinary miracle I've ever witnessed was in that meeting. And as I said, I've, as you know, I've seen eyes physically come back, but I would say that the most extraordinary miracle I've ever seen was, was the, the, the child with, I say child, he was 21 years of age, but he looked eight. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was, Dave. But anyway, it, it was a, he had Crohn's disease and about two other diseases or something like that. And he'd never spoken, never walked, never anything. Sorry, no, he'd walked. He, but but he'd never spoken, and uh, you know he looked he looked like he was eight. He was 21 years of age, and he began saying Jesus and twirling, you know, and yelling. And his parents start crying, you know, watching this, you know. Um, but but the thing is, but it's been based based on that foundation. But listen, we've got more, 
And um, we had an amazing prayer meeting this week and, and Robin rebuked the spirit of unbelief and I love it. I, I encourage you to do that because in fact, you can, you can do, I, I'm, I give you permission to do that to me because every single inch of unbelief needs to get removed until such time as faith actually occupies that place. Now, I said this a little while ago and I'll say this now. Did you know that you can, that, that, that what happens in your brain is that, is that through experience and through, um, I won't go into all the science of it, your brain has a thought process that, listen, in 0.3 of a second, it's already made a decision on a piece of information. When I say something, 0.3 of a second, your brain has actually put your thought processes down a particular track and started going down that track automatically. Now, I taught on this a while ago, this is uh, when I was teaching about the mind of Christ. And so, you know, some of our experiences are unconsciously, we're actually not really believing, right? That's actually true. This is why, um, you know, this, the word of the Lord is powerful to divide between, um, divide between spirit and soul, yeah? Because not all our thoughts are, are from the Lord. Well, listen, um, I, I said at the same time, what's amazing though, that's the negative. What's amazing though is it takes potentially three times to retrain a brain. So I can have faith in three moments of retraining my own brain. Wow, that's cool. So unconsciously, before you even say something, I come to someone who needs healing, and in this case, it's someone who's disabled. And instead of the thought process being, Jesus, I'm going to need you to come through here, the thought process is, this person's about to get out of the wheelchair. This is going to be amazing. See the difference? That's faith, 0.3 of a second. But faith is the actual knowing. It's way past the mind. Okay, so um, that was a little detour. Just, you know, you can have that one for free. How many enjoyed that one? My point is you can continue to speak and you will believe it. Yeah? How many of us are speaking the experiences we've been given in the past and saying, thank you, Jesus, because you know that the Lord's about to upgrade you? The first thing is the presence of God. The second thing is that relationships matter and how we do relationships. And that's why um, with the Lord, but also, and he sees in secret. And that's why, um, that, that's why we, um, we're, we're so happy that we get to send Gary and Sarah out into the body of Christ. It's such an honor for us to release that to the kingdom because they're one of our highest values as the kingdom. And therefore, we, we know we're receiving even though we, we're going to miss them. Is that true? The, the third really is transformation that we have to be transformed, which I've just been speaking on, that we have to be transformed to be like Jesus because um, w we're, not, we're not Jesus. There's not a person in who, who is Jesus, but you have Jesus within us. But yet he says, listen, be like me and be transformed by the renewing of your what? The spirit. Be transformed by the renewing of your spirit. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. What? What, what are you shaking your heads at me? Re renewed by the transformed of your mind, incidentally. Why? Because in your mind is the actual battleground, and that's where you're going to choose to believe or you're not going to believe. And that's what I'm saying. You can actually teach yourself in your mind uh, through, the whole, through the power of the Holy Spirit to believe and keep speaking until it actually believes, and then it upgrades into faith where you never question anymore. The question on whether Jesus, the theology of, of whether Jesus wants to heal is a classic because it's, it's one of those ones that you can teach till the cows come home and people will get healed and healed and healed that Jesus wants to heal and he, and he doesn't, isn't the author of sickness. You can teach it till the cows come home and people will believe you sort of until they go, oh, but the Lord is trying to teach me from the sickness. Now, here's the thing. The Lord might be trying to teach you from that sickness. I don't doubt that because, as I said, he uses things to teach you. But that doesn't mean in any way, shape or form that sickness is from him. That is completely different. And it was Dowie, in, in, it was Alexander Dowie, a Melbourne person, who, came, who, who got given the revelation by an angel that, listen, Jesus went around doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil. It's oppression. It's flat-out oppression every time. I don't care if it's a cold. I don't care if it's motor neuron disease, Crohn's disease. I don't care if you're disabled. I don't care schizophrenia. Whatever it is, it is oppression. And it shouldn't be tolerated. But when it's a cold, it's easy for us to tolerate. 
bit harder for us to tolerate when it's cancer. But the same veracity should be there for any of it. Great word as well. Hallelujah. <laughs> you guys are quiet today. That the presence would go with us. That we would be a body that, that puts the presence first and expects the presence to come. Right? That number two, that, that our relationships matter, that we look after each other, that we, that we re- relate to one another, relate to the Father, relate to one another. Um, that our time with the Father and our vertical relationship and our, our, our relationships like that matter. That transformation, that we should be transformed. And, and finally, really, that we expect the kingdom to be absolutely um, delivered and demonstrated. Now listen, if you went to Toronto before the outpouring, Mark DuPont gave a word to them and said, listen, it's going to be like Niagara Falls. You are going to, there's going to be a revival that is going to break out that is going to train the world on the Holy Spirit. Now, get John and Carol had things happening for years before that broke out because they had a culture and they had a focus and they were hungry and they were whatever. So they put that effort in. But at the same time, when that word came, they were kind of like, really? You know, because you go... 150 people, I'm going to train the world on revival? That doesn't sound right. Do you know what I mean? You kind of go, hang on, hang on, logic-wise. And that's okay because the Lord honoured the, the, the faith and whatever, the, the, the hunger and the focus of that and the culture that they built. But we can have a culture of revival that the Lord will for every time do something with the kingdom, with us, if we expect that. You can have 20 people in a room and transform the world. You can have 15,000 and do nothing. Without the presence of God and without the hunger to do something in the kingdom, you will do nothing. Set first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. The kingdom of God is paramount. And that means that the kingdom of God is not just Hillview or not just a church. It means that it is... Uh, literally the kingdom being established in any single avenue that the Holy Spirit speaks to us to establish it in. It means that we, we honour and help every other church we can find because, to be honest, the kingdom is, is infinitely more important than how this congregation, other than the fact that when we come together, we should be expecting to receive of the kingdom of God and of heaven. Can I tell you what the benchmark is for church? Who wants to hear what the benchmark is for church? Someone, someone maybe yell it out at me. Oh, well, no, that's such a random statement. You could go off with, you know, whatever. To me, the benchmark for church is heaven. Are, you, are we encountering that yet? Mm, every now and then, partially, right? Like we got it partially. But listen, that's the benchmark. Why do I say that? How did Jesus tell you how to pray? On heaven. <laughs> on heaven on earth as it is in heaven and vice versa he told you he told you that he was praying that you become in him and he become in you to the point where um it literally overtakes you to the same degree that the father is in jesus that's the prayer that blows my mind out of all of it that's the prayer that blows my mind and i don't want familiarity and and 20 years of the kingdom and of glory that we've had in here to prevent us from moving into the very glory that the Holy Spirit has got for us. Is that true? It has the power to do that. The very familiarity of who Jesus was actually took away the very power of of Jesus himself to actually do signs and wonders. This is the this is literally the son of God. And and their own familiarity could stop them doing that. Well, I don't want us to be that people. I want us to be the people that come in and go Holy Spirit we need you again. We are so desperate. You know, this week, before I uh, wrap up, James Maloney, um, we, we had an a amazing time with uh, James Maloney this week. He was speaking at a conference, and James is one of the fathers in the faith, and he was part of a, a move called the Golden Candlestick. And, um, and so there's some people that heard this testimony, they were in that, the meeting, and some people that would know this, and... and um, the golden candlestick was, I think it was about the 20s. I haven't gone and researched it properly. I'm just really relating what James said. But um, in about the 20s, they came from a Bible school and they determined that they were going to covenant together to pray and seek the Holy Spirit together. Well, they did so for 53 years, six nights a week. 
But by the time James Maloney came along, they were worshipping every week. By the time he said, I lit- there was one meeting I literally said, you know this gold dust stuff you guys have? And he goes, yeah. He goes, literally one time I had to move the gold dust out of the atmosphere so I could see what was happening in the meeting because it was hanging in there. How many know we're not at that stage yet? Yet. That's a possibility in the Holy Spirit, guys. He said at one stage, I was, uh, there was the, like, they would get transported all the time and go to other nations and preach and stuff like that, which this, that's happened all through, if you don't believe me, that's happened all through church history. Come to Revival History one time when I, when I preach on Revival History, the, the series, and you'll hear all about it. But it's happened all, all the way through church history. But, but they were getting transported into, um, into the Islamic countries particularly and preaching to people and bringing them to Jesus and praying and doing a bunch of stuff and really releasing what is now the 1040 window that, that, um, that we're now praying for, right? Thank you, Jesus, for those 53 years, those, those people for 53 years. He said, at one stage, we're in a meeting and, and I'm standing there and I look up and suddenly here's this, like, he said, like 13 foot. If I, I, I'm pretty sure that was the feet he said. I think it was 13 foot. Was it 13? Something like that? 13 foot, yeah. 13 foot elder like guy just standing there and he had this long elongated beard and whatever and he looked at him and he's like what the heck and he's like he's behind this guy and he said to the guy who's who's one of the guys um he said who is this guy he said oh he's just one of the 24 elders just like it was normal for them but the thing is they had the spirit of glory and they had the they had commitment in the holy spirit and because they did they received of that now james um James was picked out by one of them in a town and James was told to come in to uh, meet them and they came to him and said, listen, we've been waiting for you for 53 years because we, we've got to give what we have to you. Now, he had an angel come to him at that stage at 17 years of age physically and say to him, listen, um, what I've just given to you, you're going to give to the body of Christ someday, but it's not time yet and well, I'll tell you how to do it. Guess where his first place he got to release it? Sorry, not the first place he's got to release it, he's released it before. But he said, really, the first time, um, a few years back, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I know I'm continuing a little bit late today, but this is important. A few years back, um, sorry, was it a few years? No, it was a few months, I think. I, no, I'm a bit sketchy on the details, so just pause on that. Like, you know, let me just say, I'll tell you when I'm sketchy on the details so you know. But, but he went back to his hometown, and he had a word from Bill Johnson that really rocked him about the inheritance of what he had and giving it away to the body of Christ. And, and he's in this... Um, he gets back to his hometown and he goes to preach and, they, and the last living disciple of that 53 years, they ca- wanted to go to the meeting. So they had to carry her in. Apparently they had to carry her in because she's been praying so long on her knees that they didn't work anymore. So they carry her into the meeting. She gets dropped down. She, grabs, she, 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 says, to the, she says to him, listen, um, a man spoke to you a couple of days ago about inheritance and about giving away to the body of Christ. I can now, uh, I'm now ready to pour oil over you and when you go and release what you release, you know, the whole body of Christ will be connected to that very move. And so, so he, she poured oil over him because she gave him a word of knowledge about this so he knew it was God and whatever. So she poured oil over him and then said, I can go be with Jesus. Five days later, she passed away in her sleep. That's a, that's a hero in the faith. When you meet her, the, the, the word hero is going to be all over her back and front, right? That's amazing, isn't it? These are, these are the people that, you're gonna be ch- that are going to be, I would say, in a very high position in heaven. You know, it's not necessarily the signs and wonders, prophets and apostles, although they bless them. You know, don't get me wrong. I don't mean it that way, but I just mean it's not what we men would think of. It's the humble. And, um, and, so, and so my understanding, that was only a couple of months ago, I believe, because he said, I'm moving into the fourth phase of my ministry that God predicted to me via an angel. And really the first place I'm coming is Melbourne. And so he connected. He, he then went and released this impartation and so that same move that happened with those people for 53 years is here in this room right now by divine connection. Because we, we often believe it if we get prayed for, laid on of hands or whatever. But, but and, and he was deliberately telling these stories to create the faith, to create the connection pathway. But if you can believe that they are your foundation, that is literally our inheritance. How many want that? You know, what would happen if a Lord, you know, just rocked up and we had 53 years of glory from here? Wow. Moravians had 100 years. 
hundred year prayer meeting didn't stop for seven or for a uh, hundred years seven days a week and i want the presence of god you with me what we speak is important and so i want us to begin speaking that the lord would break out uh, with an unusual glory and when i say unusual i say that because the lord has spoken to us that it will not look the same as before so if you expect it the same as before you will not receive it because it is different from what it has been no question about but i want you to start speaking consistently when you think of hillview i want you to start speaking father we're not going without your presence and we want that unusual glory the benchmark is heaven guys the benchmark is heaven in us to the degree that it was in Jesus and more. Why? Because Jesus walked in heaven, John chapter 3, okay, walked in heaven while on earth. Don't believe me, look it up. It says the son, there, um, no one has ascended into heaven. The Son of Man who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. That is our inheritance. That is exactly our benchmark. And, our, and what that looks like in terms of the kingdom of God, I don't know. And that's a, that's, a good, that's a good thing for us to find out, yeah? Will you stand with me? Father, I thank you for the kingdom right now. I thank you right now for signs and wonders. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for the sign and wonder of the hungry right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for the sign and wonder right now of the hunger of the Holy Spirit. I just want to repeat a, a prophetic word that Gary just slipped into his 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 uh his preaching about two weeks ago i'm just well i'm going to repeat two two words from the prophets prophet sarah morgan hillview pick up your dreams because the holy spirit says that the dreams are about to come to pass he wants you to pick it up pick it up meaning you've got to physically do something faith requires a physical action you cannot say you have faith but have no physical action it's not possible you cannot say you you have faith you can say you believe but you cannot say you have faith without an actual physical action the james, james chapter 2 that's prophet sarah morgan prophet gary morgan desperation is about to be replaced by desire how many know that's an amazing prophetic word can you lift your hands with me father we're asking for the prophetic gift of desire in jesus name the same gift that was on katherine coolman's life father i thank you for katherine coolman who was so hungry for you when she would stand there she would say you're the only person he's the only thing i've got he's the only thing i can depend on he's the only person and the very presence of god would break out every single place she went when she walked in the building whole people would come under the power of the holy spirit father i thank you for lonnie frisbee the evangelist lord who as same hunger lord had that hunger and hundreds and hundreds of people came to the lord through the jesus people movement lord i bless it in jesus name father we thank you for the hunger right now of the golden candlestick people and the faithfulness well we bless them lord god for praying for the hunger and the and, and that spirit of that gift of hunger and that, that gift of perseverance that came upon them to go for a revival and they went for it lord for 53 years six nights a week for francis metcalf father in the name of jesus we just release that kind of hunger right now in jesus name father we just release that kind of desire in jesus name someone's um i want you to stay in the spirit and keep going for hunger i'm asking one of the worship team just to come back um and just play guitar or something like that or, or keys or whatever but just keep going for the holy spirit please stay in the holy spirit for the gift of desire someone's um someone uh, 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 like a liver problem it's not a liver it's not a stomach it's somewhere in between um problem but it's on the right hand side it's on the right hand side i want you to come forward in jesus name father in the name of jesus i just thank you right now lord for the for the breaker anointing father that we received in that in that meeting father in jesus name we just release a breakthrough in the spirit right now in jesus name we just confer upon hillview that breakthrough spirit that was imparted to us through the laying on of hands through james maloney and, and bill johnson and father we thank you right now lord god for that moving of the waters right now in jesus name we thank you for the angels during the waters father i thank you for every thought process that exalts itself against the gift of faith that exalts itself against the faith of the holy spirit father in the name of jesus i just command it right now to cut in jesus name right now i just loose the glory of god in jesus name who's that person with a stomach condition come forward 
In Jesus' name, we just release the power of God in Jesus' name. Just come forward. Just come forward. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stand right in the middle. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord, we just thank you for an encounter of heaven in Jesus' name. We just thank you for the encounter of heaven in Jesus' name. We just thank you for the encounter of heaven in Jesus' name. We thank you for the angels. We thank you for the 24 elders. We thank you, Lord God, that it is our divine right to approach boldly the throne of grace. Father, I release right now, Lord God, just a a wave of emotional healing as well in Jesus' name and spirit healing in Jesus' name in the sense, Lord, that that, that that which has been completely abused, Father, where abuse has taken hold and has entrenched itself so deeply, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command it to come out. Heaven is your, is your, is your, is your inheritance. Just begin to worship Him, guys. If you want to come forward, you come forward. If you want to do it from where you are, do it from where you are. But just begin to release the high praises. The high praises are actually not the shouting. They're actually the melody. High actually, that high actually means the melody of the Holy Spirit. Just begin to, just begin to worship the Lord as heaven just comes down in this place. Father, heaven is our benchmark. You are our benchmark, Lord. Thank you for that divine hunger, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that divine energy. Those whose faith, you feel that something overweight when I've spoken today, I've awakened faith. And when Jesus has spoken today, He's awakened faith in you. I just want to lift, I want you to lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release the energizing of faith right now in Jesus' name. The energizing of faith to go for more right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you put divine possibilities right now in people's minds. Divine possibilities just coming into people's minds right now. And thank you, Lord. And I want you, when you get those divine possibilities, just to begin to thank the Lord for it because the Lord can do what He says He can do, but we've got to speak faith. We've got to speak belief until it becomes faith. I see heaven. Lord, thank you for heaven. Thank you, Lord God, for the throne of grace. Thank you for the martyrs. Lord, I bless you, Lord God, for the, that you see us in righteousness, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us access. I thank you, Lord God, that it's open to us right now. Thank you that you are knocking on the door, waiting for someone who would open the door for you. Father, we open the doors right now. We open the gates right now in Jesus' name. We open the gates to create into heaven right now. We open the gates to create. We open the gates. Come on, decree it. We open the gates. Thank you that you send your angel ahead, Lord.
the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The name above every single name. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? Father, we are your house, Lord. We are your house, Lord. Tell him you're his house. And we're being built together into a house of the Lord. Father, we just take familiarity in Jesus' name and we rebuke it by the name of Jesus. We just command the stronghold of familiarity to come out in Jesus' name. Continue to worship. If you need to go, you just feel to go, but I, the Holy Spirit's here and we're not moving. If you're a parent, please collect your child just so that we can release those guys. If you need healing, just get it direct from the Father right now because He's moving in this room right now.
On, sing it out. Now and forever, the Father, we just release your power in this room in Jesus' name. Your eternity, Lord, your kingdom. We release your kingdom in this room. Go into all the world preaching the good news, telling them the kingdom of God has arrived. Father, we just say the kingdom of God is here in Jesus' name.
Lift a shout. Lift a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Just before we go anywhere, just before we go anywhere, stay in the spirit. Judy, Judy, I'm going to interrupt you. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys, I'm interrupting you, Judy. Sorry. I just want you to pray for the congregation. I'm totally putting her on the spot. I just felt like the Lord just wanted to release power in your prayer life. How many want that, myself included? So I'm just going to get Judy to pray for a moment. Just ask for power in your prayer life, and then we're just going to close up. I just pray for the congregation right now, God, and I ask you for your fire to fall, Father. And I thank you, Father, that we would have an incredible revelation of the authority and the power of heaven, Father. Let it fall in our homes, God. Let it fall as we begin to pray, God, that you would begin to to move in our hearts, God. You would begin to move in our homes, God. But Lord, I thank you for the anointing upon our words to bring breakthrough in the heavens, Father. I decree it in the heavens. That there will be breakthrough, Father, in our prayer. God, the tarrying, Father God, the, the words and the, the prayers of, of ages, of lengths of time, Father God, will come to pass, God. It will come to pass. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for the glory, the glory of heaven to fall in our homes, Father. And I thank you, God. I decree breakthrough, God, for those that have struggled to pray, God, that there will be breakthrough we desire, as Stephen said today, God, and that we will come to that place, God, and we will meet heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you uh, go and greet someone and love on someone if you uh, if you're still struggling with uh, some aspect and need physical healing, you can come up the front, but I, I encourage you, this is one of those meetings where the Lord's doing it personally, so I want to encourage you to go to God first. Amen.